We're now ready to begin polishing the heroine's performance, and in this lesson, we'll work on smoothing her out as she blocks the attack. Let's get started by showing our connect curves. I'll go ahead and unhide the don't select layer. And we'll go in and select her controls. At that point, we'll head over to our curve editor, select all of our keys, and set our tangents to auto. All right, let's go ahead and play this back. So we don't have much to do at all. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start on the feet. So as she steps in, we need to make sure that the right foot plants first. So what I'll do is have it plant a few frames before on frame four. Let's go ahead and hit play. Already that's starting to look like a, a nice step in. We'll worry about animating the heel and the foot left later. We're just getting a rough idea down. Now, before we get to those two tasks, let's go ahead and take a look at the left foot. You can see we're getting some locking in that leg. So what I'd like to do on our first frame, frame zero, so just go ahead and drop her down a bit. Let's grab her arm controls. and the center of gravity. And again on zero, just gonna translate her down. So that there is a, a slight bend in the leg that should be locked. But it doesn't look as if the, the bend is there. All right, so I think that's gonna work out well. All right, so now we can focus on the step in. Let's grab the heel, and let's have that land a bit sooner. So on frame four, I'm going to go there and rotate the heel up. That creates a slight bend in the knee. And then we'll have it fall on frame five. So I'll just go in and first make sure that we deselect all keys on our track bar, and then we can move in and, and drop that key sooner. So here's what we end up with, a nice looking step out. Okay, so at this point we need to make sure that the foot lifts. And we can do that on frame two. Let's go to our leg control and translate it up. Not much at all. Generally footsteps are are low unless the character is doing an, an exaggerated walk. Alright, so that looks nice. Let's now focus on the left foot. You can see we need to fix this foot roll. It's not only going through our our ground, but at the same time the the roll is, is definitely off. She needs to push off of that foot as she starts to hop forward. So to get started, let's grab the left leg control. And we're going to go ahead and delay the animation here. Let's grab the key on frame 6 and bring that to frame 8. That way she holds that plant for a little bit longer so we can start to animate a, a foot roll. Grab our foot roll control object. We should already have a key on frame 6, so on frame 8, let's go ahead and rotate the foot up. And we'll rotate it over in the y-axis to loosen up the ankle. Now we'll have it drop on frame 10 as she lifts her, her foot off the floor. So I'll use transform to zero, so I'll right click. Now going back to frame 10, selecting our leg control, we can go ahead and bring the leg forward here and rotate the ankle back for follow through and for a nice push off. I think we could bring it forward a little bit more on 10. Great. 
Let's take a look at things in the back view. Looks like here we can go ahead and rotate the ankle in the z-axis and out in the y-axis to fix its orientation. And then you can see it pushes back on 13. No worries. We'll just go ahead and bring it forward. Okay. I'll drop it down in the X a little bit. And here's what we end up with. A, a very nice start to our hop. Beautiful. So let's see how this looks when we play it back. Great. If anything, I might want to lower the, the foot on 13 so it's not so so high. The reason why is by the time we get to 15, we want to see that, that lift. And if it happens on 13, it would almost look as if there's no change when we get to 15. Great. So I'll play back again, and that will work very well. All right, so we're now ready to work on the arms. Let's go ahead and start with the sword. And though this looks kind of tricky, it won't be too bad at all. So first things first, just taking a look at the attack, you can see that the villain has actually made it through on frame 5. So we need to go ahead and speed up the time in which the, the heroine's blade protects her. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the key on 6 and bring that to 5. Great. And now we can go ahead and move the sword so that it clashes with the, the villain's sword on frame 5 as well. Excellent. All right, so sticking with the sword arm, let's add an in-between on 3 where we bring the arm out. And already, after doing that, we should start to notice some nice movement. But we need to take it a bit further. Let's go ahead and drop the wrist on 3 just slightly, just so we get a nice in-between. She flips the sword around. Great, now we can go ahead and start to add more in-betweens. On frame 2, I'll go ahead and bring the arm out. And we can work on rotating the wrist so it's not broken, and then bring it down just a little bit here. Again, so we have a, a nice flip of the sword. So the heroine protects herself. Okay, great. So that's looking nice. It'd be a good idea to take a look at our trajectories also. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they tell us. On frame two, we can go in and bring the arm in a bit more here. And as a result, we may want to grab the elbow and bring that out. Great. Now on frame one, I'd also like to angle the sword down to smooth out the, the movement between 0 and 5. Great. All right, let's now go ahead and tweak the right elbow on one. Just go ahead and bring that out a bit. Then I'd like to just do one final tweak to the, the wrist on one so that kind of slant it down. It was up too high. Going back to the right elbow, you can see how we'll start to get some weird elbow bends around four. So we'll just go ahead and bring up the elbow a bit to fix that. And there we have it. So that looks nice. Let's go ahead and take care of the left arm. So selecting that control object, we'll start from zero. Okay, so first frame looks good. Let's go ahead and move forward. You can see how we're getting some intersecting. And what I'd also like to do with this is delay its timing a bit. So 
doesn't appear to to happen the same time the the blade blocks the attack so i'd almost like to just delay this key on six just one frame down to frame seven and then we can add an in between on four where we move the left arm away from her hip and then just rotate the wrist down Great. So you can see we could add another in between on two. So it's just a matter of making sure the hand doesn't intersect with the hip when it comes forward. So that looks nice. At that point, you can start to tweak the finger. So I'll go to the thumb. And on two, I'll just go ahead and rotate it forward. Heading over to our modify panel, we'll just go ahead and zero out those thumb channels and maybe add a slight bend just to loosen it up a bit. Great. So things are looking really nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the attack frame once again just to make sure we're good to go here. It looks like the Left elbow can be brought in some on five. So I'll go ahead and take care of that. Just translating it in. We can do the same thing on six. Just bringing that elbow in some more. And we are good to go. So we've managed to take care of the, the first part of our heroine's animation as she comes in to block the attack. And that's looking very nice. Can go ahead and play it back. Great. So by the next lesson, we're ready to start working on the anticipation to her counterattack. So let's move to the next lesson and, and get to work.